Mo Willems, you are one of my favorites. Thank you so much for being on the show. I'm really happy to be here. You, you taught my kids how to read, so I want to thank you. Because oh, thank you. Uh, we are obsessed with all of your books, uh, but Elephant and Piggy books, I think personally, as an adult, as a parent, I don't get tired of reading them. I look forward to them. I love how creative they are. I just love how honest they are and how funny they are. Um, and I've read them probably more than you have. <laughs> that's possible. Well, I would hope. I mean, that's what they're, they're built to be read a billion times, you know? Yeah. It's not about, it's not about the surprise at the end. It's about the characters. And one of the things that I do is I only put in 49% of the book. You're there. You're jazzed and you're performing because you're enjoying the book. And that makes you come alive. You got your start on Sesame Street, right? Which was totally an accident. You know, I wanted to do sketch comedy and I was performing sketch comedy and I was with grownups, about grownups. And when I got hired for Sesame Street, I was like, oh, wow, I got on a sketch comedy show. That's great. You were saying there's this one, uh, was it Rosita that you, the sketch that you wrote for Sesame yeah. Street? Or yeah. Scene? And I think that, so I, I'm really interested in failure and all my books are to a certain degree about characters failing. And at Sesame Street, I had the, Rosita was gonna learn how to play the guitar. And at the end of the episode, I wanted to make sure that she didn't. And the producers, they came back to me and they were like, listen, we like Rosita playing the guitar and all that, but at the end, she really needs to play the guitar. And I was young, I was in my twenties. So I said to the producers, you guys come back tomorrow, play me Stairway to Heaven and I'll change you on that again. <laughs> and the rest is history. I think that we really need to talk about failure and because it's the only thing that all of us do every day. It's the only thing we have in common is that we fail. Yeah, you're right. And you gotta take that risk and you gotta try certain things. When this whole uh, quarantine happened, actually right even before it, you started a thing called Lunch Doodles right out yeah. of the gate. And I was like, Wait, he's, because I thought, I go, wait, we're going to do a show. We have to do something, really. And then someone's like, have you seen what Mo Williams is doing? I'm like, is he doing a show already? Like, we just started this. Like, can I have one thing? Well, that's, well, Jimmy, this is really the inspiration was I figured if a talk show host can write a book, then I should be able to do a show. <laughs> right? It's only yeah, fair. I agree. Um, Look, I was terrified. I was going from Los Angeles from meetings to D.C. to do a jazz doodle jam with Jason Moran. I was going to do some stuff with Ben Folds. And it all disappeared. And I've always realized that, like, if this is affecting me, it's got to be affecting kids. Like, how I feel, how shocked I am, how much I need art. Right? Because right now, art is essential. Science is going to get us out of this. Art is going to get us through this. We're going to be able to understand what's that. going on and be able to handle our emotions. So I knew that I needed to draw and doodle just to feel a sense of self. And if I need that, then probably kids need that as well. So now is the time to get together and do something. You're right. You just got to keep, yeah. So here's the challenge. I, I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to play a game with you. This is okay. a game called Squillums. I'm just going to make a little... Just a thing, and then okay. you're going to turn it into a drawing, okay? So here we go. It's going to do try. just like that, right? And then, and it doesn't matter because again, there's no such thing as a wrong drawing, right? So I just made this, just a little squill, right? Just okay. a little thing. You're going to turn it yeah. on the drawing. So here, I'm going to hand it to you. There you go. All right. Thank you very you much. You got it? I did yeah, get it. Welcome. Thank you. Take another pen and turn that into something. What does that look like to you? That's half of a drawing. What do you think you can make out of that? Oh, okay. Yeah. Hmm. I think I see something. Now I'm getting into something else. I don't know what it is, but I- You're giggling, so that's already a victory. <laughs> I, I am giggling, I, but it's just because it's really bad. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, let me be the judge of how terrible it is. Oh, that's excellent. I love what you have, but that's fabulous. That's it's okay. I, it's like oh, a little- absolutely. Like a, poodle, like a poodle dog or something. Yeah, it's a thirsty poodle. <laughs> I think the thirsty poodle is an unrepresented dog cartoon. <laughs> <laughs>
you know, we Thank need you. more thirsty poodles. Thank you. Uh, see, finally, I wish that someone was around to hear it. We need more of these. <laughs> who we was do. Your, who was your uh, idol when you were growing up, Mo? Oh, uh, Charles Schultz. Charles Schultz. Uh, and it was Peanuts. Because, Charlie Brown. You know, Charlie Peanuts. When I was five years old, I wrote Charles Schultz a letter that said, Dear Mr. Schultz, uh, can I have your job when you're dead? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Wow. Cut to the chase. I know. And then I just waited because I was like, and he, he not died for a long time. He, he <laughs> that was his response. That was his yeah, response he, to you. He, he just exactly. not died. <laughs> he continually not died. Um, and when he did pass, I was maybe in my late 30s, 40s. I become friends with Sparky's widow. And she brought me to his studio and gave me one of his nibs, which are the pens that you dip in the ink. And I drew one of my books with his nib. No. Yeah. That's so cool. Doesn't that feel good? That's the... I, it was great. And what was crazy was it was so hard to draw with that I got angry at it. You know, I was like, this pen is difficult to use. You know, how dare you be good and good with a difficult pen? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wait, before we go, though, I, I have something. Okay, this is, this is my fan thing. All right, I just want to indulge you just for a second. Before the pandemic, this show, The Tonight Show, was hosted by a guy named Johnny Carson. Of course. Right? Johnny Carson, in between the bits, there would be a thing that said, more to come, it would be a drawing, right? More to come. That? Yeah. The more to come drawing. Now, when you were a kid, I'm assuming you wanted to be on The Tonight Show. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. I, I wanted to be the more to come guy. Like he would have I a bit that said more, would say more to come and then you go to the commercial. And it was just a little cartoon. I figured he was just like a guy sitting on the veranda of his Rolls Royce drawing. Johnny would come every day and say, oh, excuse me, Mr. Cartoonist, can I have that more to come drawing? He'd be like, be gone, Mr. Carson. So <laughs> I'm on the show, so this is what I made for you. And really for me when I say for you. There's a more to come. Wow. Later tonight on the Tonight Show. Oh Come my on. God! Look at that. On the oh. Tonight Show. How there we go. fun is that? Mo That's a Williams. lifelong dream. There you go. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you for letting me do this. You are the best, buddy, and I can't wait to see you in person. Keep it up, and thank you, thank you, thank you so much. All right. Be well. Take care. Bye, bud. On and on and on. Ah, I said. And it's on and on and on.